It's Bible study time. Yay. Yay. I've been waiting for this all day. So thank you to all of you who are here with us live. Thank you for those of you joining us on live stream. Or perhaps maybe you're watching us a little later. You've had to work late today. Wherever it is that you join us and whatever time, we're always glad we're together. So together. how was your get together? So and just in case you're wondering, I did not drop this on Ron's head. <laughs> and try to glue it together frantically before church started. It's yes. part of an illustration later, so in case those inquiring minds want to know. I'm a cracked pot. He, you are a cracked pot, and yes. we, we have it here to prove. There we go. How has your week been? It was good. You know, I've had about two or three people that come to me and say, you know, Amy really surprised me, her being the, you want me to finish? Okay. Her being the headmaster, that she went so easy and lied on Peter. Well, you know, I was trying to show mercy. We, we were in church. But what they said, mercy. Bill wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe no, so. No, Bill would not have done it. Would have been that. Well, uh, it has been a beautiful oh. week. I hope you've had time to get out and enjoy some of this beautiful sunshine and the low humidity, mm -hmm. things that we normally are not seeing towards the end of June. One of those things you always want to go, thank you, God. We yes, appreciate yes. that. Uh, well, let me just let you know about a few announcements for things coming up here in the life of the church. Pastor Allen this Sunday is starting a new sermon series, and it is titled Family Matters. Mm -hmm. So, Part one begins to focus on the one place where your Christian witness matters the most, your family. So our service will begin at 10 in person, live stream, uh, but you, you won't want to miss this series because no matter, no matter where we are, we are all part of some family, whether it's mom and dad and kids, maybe it's mom and kids, dad and kids, grandparents and kids, maybe you find yourself... Uh, at home alone, but your neighbors are your family. Whatever Fa family it is, of God. family of God, right here. There's something for everyone. Now, big news we've been promoting is that on Sunday, July 4th, drum roll. Brrr, yes. Okay, he improvised. That's okay. On July 4th, Colby Cafe is back open out in the lobby of the church, meaning you can find Frank's Donuts. <laughs> And coffee, and in, who knows, maybe by some point I might get tea out there for we tea drinkers. I don't do happens. coffee. I don't do coffee. Okay. I think Bill and I are the only two teachers <coughs> at Sayre School that don't drink coffee, maybe. But anyway, Colby Cafe, a great time to come and fellowship with one another. And at 845 to 930, there will be some adult Bible groups mm -hmm. meeting. Uh, Scott Franklin is going to be leading uh, the Kingdom Men group. Uh, Rhoda Moore, assisted by Linda Carter, will lead a women's group in the classroom over in the hallway. And Linda, Linda Centers and Kayla Swanson will also lead a ladies group that will meet in the pastor's study. So three different groups if you'd like to be a part of that. And just as a reminder, all the classes that we're doing for children and youth are happening on Wednesday nights. Uh, okay. All you have to do is drive back in the back parking lot to see the cars back there go in the gym. There's just an abundance of children and uh -huh. youth studying God's word. And I just think that is amazing. And, of course, worship service will remain at 10 a.m. Okay? All right. So we had our baby bottles uh, for the baby bottle blessings. And maybe you weren't here last Sunday or forgot about it or didn't hear about it till last Sunday. Guess what? It's never too late. So if you'd like to bring one of those in, we would greatly appreciate that. Uh, the Ladies Fall Retreat is September 17th through 19th at Cumberland Falls State Resort Park. There's a $50 deposit to secure your place with the remaining $60 due July 30th. And if you have questions about that, please see Linda Jaco and Jennifer Keaton. And if you don't know who Linda Jaco and Jennifer Keaton are, come ask me. I will point you <laughs> where you need to go. Always glad because, hey, not everybody knows who that is. We want to make everybody feel welcome. Uh, also on July 4th, it's just like this 
big bang of a service. There was my little pun. Ha, ha, ha. But one of my favorite things we do in the church, baptism. I just think it's, I get chills just thinking about it. Someone just expressing their faith in this outward way. And so Sunday, July 4th, we're going to have a baptism. So if you would like to be baptized, someone in your family, please call the church office so you can be part of this. We would love, love, love to invite you to do that if that's something that you have been wanting to do. Um, I remember uh, we had someone several weeks ago that it was, you know, I was baptized as a young child and I've just rededicated my life Mm -hmm. to God and as a sign of that. So we're open to all to experience that. And last but not least. Hit it. Here it comes, people. We're having an ice cream social. Oh. Yes. Yes, we are. Go ahead and mark your calendars. Sunday, July 11th at 6 p.m. We've got some exciting details to share. We're still working out some of that, but you you want to be here. I heard on the radio today, people were celebrating. I don't think it's an ice cream day, but people were just talking about ice cream. That the average American consumes 12.1 pounds of ice cream. Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? But there are some How of whom we, w- we will not mention. How often do you twelve point one? Who may eat more than that? But that's a... 12.1. You know, I'm just real realizing I forgot that statistic. Was it a year? I'd say twice daily. Twice daily. Yes. That, would, that would be you. <laughs> that would be you. But uh, when I heard that, I was like, oh got to share that and but ice cream social so for those of you who are wonderful at making those homemade ice creams get those recipes ready Uh well that was a lot of exciting things to share but the best is yet to come with our bible study let me open with a word of prayer and then you get right to it my friend heavenly father again we just are so grateful for the opportunity uh, to study your word together And we just thank you, God, for how you have provided ways for us to meet in person, ways for us to meet uh, virtually, so many ways that we can connect, God. And we just pray that right now, uh, whatever we've been facing today, whether we've had a great day and we're just feeling like we want to celebrate, maybe it's been a very difficult day. uh, And we need to just come to the Lord and say, God, I need I need to hear from you tonight. Whatever it is, open our hearts and minds to hear what you have to say. Be with Ron. He has wonderfully prepared this lesson, but just speak through him. And we just pray, God, all things will give you glory and praise. Amen. Amen. Go, Ron. Go, Ron. Boy. (laughs) I never do uh, give these lessons a name, but if I did this one, it would be Teaching a crackpot how to learn. You wouldn't believe I had a minor in English. Heard that. Anyway, we're going to talk about pots, crackpots, non-crackpots. We're going to start tonight with uh, the great book of 2 Corinthians, Paul. When he's talking about what we have and the new creation in Christ that we are new. Mm. But if you want to follow along, I Please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> and I'm going to uh, start with, I was going to do verse 7, but I'm going to read verse 6. Okay. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Talk about a light. Verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of Of the power may be of God and not of us. Mm. Mm. I like the Amplified, what it said. It said, however, we possess this precious treasure, the divine light of the gospel, in frail human vessels of earth, that the grandeur and exceeding greatness of the power may be shown to be of God and not from us ourselves. Mm. I like that. Now, this treasure that, that Paul's referring to and talking about, it is the gospel that's currently contained in us the gospel of jesus christ in these frail fragile fickle bodies of the redeemed believers us the frail and fickle 
fragile bodies. It, it, that's what's in there. Now, the jars of clay, I, I, this really touched me. The jars of clay are people to whom God has entrusted the gospel to. Now, let me tell you, that's a big statement. These jars of clay, now, I wonder why he said jars of clay. Is the gospel that God the Father has entrusted in this earthen vessel of ours. He's entrusted it to us to do that. Now, that's between us and God right there. Now, this is interesting. Although clay jars had little value whatsoever back during those days, or beauty in themselves, they could still contain precious treasures. You might just look on the outside and say, well, there's nothing in here. But when they looked in there, there was a precious treasure in that little thing. They now, were functional. They were functional. They had a That's function. right. You know, uh, the osiris, when, they, when people would be buried in them, they would be buried in a clay uh, box, jar, large vessel type thing. So it did contain precious things, precious thoughts, but nothing any more pre precious than the light of the gospel of God that was in there. Now, when we say this, now, Paul is not belittling the body at all. He's not doing that. But what I found out, he's not belittling the physical body, but he's contrasting our body, the unattractive of it, the fragile of it, the frailty of it. And, and he's not belittling that or the insignificance of our body of what we don't think do. What he's doing is comparing it to this treasure that we have in us. And that's the gospel of God, uh, the gospel light with the worth and beauty of the gospel in it. Now, I like that. He's not belittling our bodies. He's not saying, well, you don't look like a Christian. Well, you're not built like a Christian. Well, what's a Christian built like? I don't know. Uh, probably not me. But anyway, he's comparing. <laughs> oh, I could get him. But anyway, he's comparing the insignificance of our body compared to what's in this vessel. The gospel, the light of the gospel. Now, when Christians, now listen to this word. When Christians allow themselves, God doesn't make them. When Christians allow themselves to be vessels prepared for service, God's, God's glory will shine through them. Now, his glory will shine through them, shine through humanity, and will be recognized as his power and not us. Don't look at anything we do as my power. It's his power that shines through us. Of all the people in the Bible, who would have ever thought that the Apostle Paul would be a chosen vessel? Mm. Of all people, I could have picked a million over Paul. Uh, uh, they, told, they told Brother and I, I said, go down there. There's a man down there. He's blind. He's praying. I'm going down there. Not me. Go down there. He will receive you, and you can pray with him. And he said, he is my chosen vessel. Now, did he put Paul any higher than us? I don't think so. He chose us as a vessel. I don't think there was any difference, big U's, little I's. Uh, everybody's equal. But he chose, maybe not for the same thing that was in that vessel, but he chose us as a vessel for the light of the gospel, just like he did Paul. Now, 2 Timothy 2.21 says, So whoever cleanses himself, from what is not noble and unclean, who separates himself from the contact with con contaminating and corrupting influences, will then himself be a vessel. I like this. Set apart. Come out of the world. You are set apart. You're a peculiar people. You're my chosen people. You, you are set apart. I like that. You're set apart. Uh, set apart from contact with contaminating and corrupting influences, and will then himself be a vessel set apart and useful for honorable and noble purposes, consecrated and profitable to the master, fit for the master's use. Mm. Now, not everybody falls into that category. We have to be set apart. Can we set ourselves apart from that? No. It has to be through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, through God the Father, who chooses us, and then he will set us apart. And everything I've talked about, you could go back to the Lord's Supper where he picked the bread up. He chose that. He had it in his hands. He blessed it. Chosen vessel. He blesses us. He breaks it. We may have to, that, that, that goes back to the cleansing and setting ourselves apart. He breaks it. And then he hands it out to be given to others, that treasure that's inside. 
you could probably teach about anything and have reference to the Lord's Supper on that. But he blessed it. He chose it. He blessed it. He broke it. Now, I always wonder where that broken come from. Where do you break somebody from that? It's when he cleanses us. And you know what? Somebody said, well, I'm a Christian now. I'm not broken. You may get broken. That doesn't set us free from not getting broken. Uh, that just does not do that. However, Christian lives, no matter what kind of Christian, Christian lives are like uh, jars of clay. When at times, there is times, and somebody says it doesn't happen to me, well, you better get ready. When there is times that we will experience a sense of frailty, will sense a, a vulnerability. We are not guaranteed that we're not going to have that. We're going to talk about that. Nowhere in this book does it say that we're guaranteed not to go through problems. Nowhere. Nowhere in this book does it say that we're not going to be broken. But the only thing I can tell you, it's well worth the wait. Now, I can tell you that much. It's well worth the wait. And by the way, we do win at the end. <laughs> but we are, uh, because of anxiety, we become, become frail, fragile, vulnerable because of anxiety, because of grief and weaknesses. Look what we just came through. It was a fight. I used to say it was a whipping. Uh, Paul called it a good fight. You know what a good fight is? We win. If you have a bad fight, you go whipped. But in a good fight, you win. But Paul said, fight the good fight. What we just came through with, vulnerability and some Pots were cracked, trust me on that. Trust me. And old I, expression of you fall apart. Fall apart. Fall apart. Fall you apart. know, I went through this situation and I just fell apart. I, th I think everyone at some point in time says that in their life. Sometimes you may fall apart numerous times. I don't know anybody that hasn't fallen mm -hmm. apart at one time or the other in their walk, especially in their walk for Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're going to fall apart. And sometimes this vessel and this jar of clay, it's going to crack. What do we do then? <laughs> it will crack, and it will crack. But that's not the end of it. But it will crack. And then what then? And it will. I like this. This vessel will crack. Now, yet because of God's treasure in this vessel that we've because of God's treasure in this vessel that we've got within them, they are not ever devalued or th thrown away or disregarded or pitched to the side because we have, have a cracked vessel that's like that. Uh, it can't be because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. And how many times do we forget that? You know, we can be bold now. We can stand up. We can face things and say, you know what? I used to pray. I went through a hard time one time. I went through a hard time many times, but this one time in particular. I just had to stop and just talk to the devil. And I would tell him, I'd say, look here, split foot. Unless God has given you permission to bug me like you bug me, I cast you out and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Then we can always remind him, hey, greater is he that's in me than he that's in you and the world, greater is he. And it's not in our nature as human beings when we see something broken. Well, I don't know if I can fix that. Let's just throw it away. Perfect. Let's there just throw go. it away. It's, it's useless. Uh, the, the classic, uh, back in the days when we had VCRs and they would break, oh, just throw oh. it away. You won't be able to fix it. It's cheaper to buy a new one. You know, that mentality that we have of just if it's broken, it's I useless. I like that. Don't even try to fix it. Mm -hmm. That can be applied to our Christian life. Mm -hmm. We can't throw it away. We throw it away if anybody throws it away, but God doesn't throw it away. He can fix it. I mean, you can't find anybody now that will work on a refrigerator or a stove or, or something like that. Cheaper to go buy one. Then what do you do with the old one? I don't know. But because of God's treasure that's within them they are not devalued it does a crack pot does not devalue us in the eyes of God or defraud us or defeat us in the eyes of God he is the one I, I love about Jeremiah and he went down to the potter's wheel again and put him on the on the wheel now did he throw it away no 
he remolded it, put water in it, remolded it, and worked it again, and then redid it to his specifications and his eyes. I love that. When that's the, how many times does Ronnie Boy have to go back down to the potter's wheel? I need to go to the potter's wheel. Now, I don't know anybody that's not experienced what we've just talked about. But then we can't get hung up and caught up on the cracked pot. Well, I'm finished. It's cracked. Well, you must have done something wrong. No, I might have done something right. And it cracked. But regardless, and we can't fix it. There's no way we, I can fix a spiritual crack. You know, in medicine, I've had people come to me with things, and, and, and there was nothing physical that I couldn't talk about, or there was nothing physical that I couldn't refer a patient to. The, 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 the doctors of doctors could take care of that physical problem. But if it was spiritual, we can't touch it. Mm-hmm. We just say we can pray for you, but there's nothing we can do spiritually to heal you. We need the bomb of Gilead. We need the great physician, and that can do that. Here is something I wrote down that I really did like. In this life, Christianity, and you know what? Oh, I did find that guy. I did run into him again that told me. He said, you know, since I got saved, I haven't had one problem. He said, what do you think about that? I said, well, I think you ought to go get saved again because I don't think it worked. I haven't had one problem. He's changed his mind. (laughs) He said, I've had a whipping. I said, I understand you're good. My grandfather used to say, let me look at your hands, Ronnie boy. He said, I don't feel no splinters. What kind of splinters of the cross? When you're not worried about it, then you need to go back on your knees when you're getting that far from God. You need to get back on your knees and feel the splinters of the cross again. But in this life, Christianity is not the absence of, or the removal of weaknesses. And it is not simply a show of the power of God. Mm. Now that, that'll get somebody's out there attention, eyes going up, but I'm going to read it again. In this life, Christianity is not the absence or the removal of weaknesses. And it is not simply just a show of God's power. Well, then what is it? It's Look at this. It is really a display of God's power and grace through human weaknesses. I've gone through things, and people know, they know I'm a Christian, but they know I couldn't have done it by myself. It's not my power. It's not by my power. It's not by my might. It's by the Holy Spirit, says the Lord. But they know, and I knew, now that's where it got to get important, that you know you can't do it. You can't do this. And that's what God waits for. Is for us to say, I can't do this. I can't do it. I'm not going to try anymore. I just can't do this. It's really a display of God's power and grace through human weaknesses. Him in us. And you know, I've sensed that power of him in me. I've done it because I've been up on things that I know that I couldn't have done. And what a good time that is to get to a place like that and just know that you know that you know that it wasn't me, it was you. Now, what do you do then? Then you praise him for it. Mm. And then you thank him for that power that we've got. Now, Paul also said in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and he said unto me that my grace is enough. We, you know, the disciples said, Lord, two things. Teach us how to pray. I wondered why they asked him that. They knew that they knew they'd been with him three and a half years. They had been with him. They knew the Bible. And of all things, why teach us to pray? Because they saw two things. One, that he prayed. Now, let me tell you something. When you read in the Bible that Jesus got alone and he prayed, you know, I read a scripture the other night. It said during the daytime, he taught in the synagogue. Then at night, he went to the mountains and prayed. Hmm. I think it was because they saw him pray so easy. Was he praying? Nope. He was talking to his heavenly father. And I believe for 33 and a half years, there was an open communication between him and his father every step he made on this earth. It was an open. But he said that my grace is sufficient for you. Then they said, increase our faith. Now, I'm paraphrasing this. This is in uh, the Hutchison Study Bible, but I'm paraphrasing this. Uh, 
said increase our faith. I think Christ might have, he could have said, you can't handle the faith I've done give you. You can't handle this faith I've already give you. Move that mountain. That's the faith I've given you. Now, you're asking for more, but you can't handle what I've given you that's enough and is sufficient for you right there. For my strength is made perfect in weaknesses, and therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities. How many people do that? Hmm. Boast in their infirmities. I'd rather boast in my infirmities, in my reproaches, in needs, persecutions, distress, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, through you, then I'm strong. Now, Paul prayed three times for something. Somebody said you shouldn't pray three times. I don't know who said that. But he prayed three times, and God still didn't answer his prayer. Well, if he did, he said no, no. I was going to say, didn't answer it the way he had he, hoped. Well, that's Maybe. just like me. There is no temptation taking you as such as common man. But God will, with the temptation, I don't want to do the temptation, Lord. It's a lot easier if you just take it away, and I don't have to fool with the temptation again. But will with the temptation make a way for you to escape it. But he told the apostle Paul, no, no, I'm not. Now, what was his thorn in the flesh? Well, they're still, uh, they're still arguing about that. I don't know what it was. Uh, there's so many things, his physical health, uh, his eyesight, uh, epilepsy, his statue, the arthritis. Uh, now they added on there, somebody said because he wasn't married, whatever. <laughs> well, anyway, I didn't read that. But he Regardless, said, he struggled. He's struggling. I think there, that we can all say there's something we struggle with. Now, why didn't the Holy Spirit in Scriptures tell us that? What his thorn in the flesh was. One thing I think is because if his thorn in the flesh was his eyesight, well, I don't have bad eyesight, so I don't apply to me. So it, that's the mystery of the gospel that we don't know what it is, but still he said no. Hmm. And not, not only no, but my grace is enough for you. Look at me when I talk to you. My grace is enough, and you'll get through this, and it'll be enough for you in this. Hmm. Now, this means two things. In every trouble or difficulty, we can be sure that we are more than conquerors. Mm. More than conquerors by God's love and power. Alan and I have often talked about that. How can you be more than a conqueror? That's what I was about to say. What did, that, that if you're a conqueror, you are. You've conquered. You're it. Yeah. And what to is be more, more than a conqueror? Hmm. You're more than a conqueror. You didn't just more conquer than, it. More than I can comprehend. More than I can comprehend and more than I don't have to worry about because I've already conquered it. You know, we have to go back when Jesus was talking to the disciples. He said, I now see, therefore, that you have sorrow. I can see your hearts are troubled. I, you're going to have tribulations. I can see that. He said, but I will see you again, and I have already, look at me, guys, <laughs> I've already overcome the world. Now, wait a minute. You ain't been to the cross. Doesn't matter. The cross is just a stopping off place, a confirmation. Did he doubt it? No, I didn't doubt it. That's why he came. He said, I've already overcome the world. We can declare those same words. Well, glory. We can declare <laughs> those same things. We've already overcome the world. I, I say this just about daily. I still hold firm to my faith in Jesus Christ. And what he accomplished on the cross at Calvary, I'm covered in his blood. I cannot be defeated nor destroyed by whatever hell or the earth tries to do to me. Hmm. Now, like my grandfather used to say, don't say it, stand on it. Get on it. I'm about to wander off, but get on to that's it. Okay. That's okay. That's really good. That's one, that is a wonderful thing, though, to, to think about, to start your day. Because sometimes we got to remind ourselves. Don't talk about it. Do it. Stand on it. Just do it. Who was that said? Some soft drink. Just do it. Nike. Oh, tennis shoes. Okay. <laughs> In every trouble or difficulty, we find out that we are more than conquerors. You have lost it. I thought it was Mella Yella or something. I don't no, know. No, I thought you were. <laughs> okay. I love you, Ron. I love you more for bailing <laughs> me out. 
We we need to laugh. Laughter is good. Well, right here's a lot of laugh. I'm telling you. No, that's good. We're talking about cracked pots. We got to laugh, right? Well, hello. Okay. But number one, every trouble or difficulty we endure, we know that Paul said that through him were more his love and his power were more than conquerors. Number two, <laughs> soft drinks. <laughs> okay, number two, our weaknesses. Now listen to this. Our weaknesses and our troubles and suffering can open, hold on, can open opportunities for people to see God shining through us. Mm. You know, it might not, I mean, people, you know, you can see, you can see the light shining through uh, the, the minister of music, the, or the, the pastor and everything, the teachers. You can see that light shine. But when it comes to someone right on our level and we see that light, it can give an opportunity for somebody to say, I knew a man one time that told me, he said, I don't like you. And I said, okay. I wanted to say, but I'm a Christian. I, I don't care much for you either. But anyway, he said, because you're happy on Monday morning. Why? I said, well, I'm just happy. He said, you know, I would like to get what you've got. Hmm. Well, glory. And he said, I would like to, boy, he, and he went under. He went, went under a lot faster than Peter ever thought about going under. He said, I would like to find a church that I could make feel happy. And I said, you're not going to find it. He said, well, I'll tell you what. I'd like to find a denomination. I thought, buddy, you're going way under now. I won't be able to grab you. Then he said, I would like to find a pastor that could give me that joy. I said, hold on. The pastor, through the word, can show you and lead you to that joy. I said, but you're not going to find that joy that I've got in all three. Now, they'll help. Now, they'll help. You need them. But they will help. They're not the sor source they're, of the joy. They're not the source of the joy. And he said, I would like to find that. He said, well, uh, Lord, forgive me. He said, I saw on TV uh, an evangelist. And I'm not talking about evangelists. They're good evangelists. I'm not saying that. But I said, you cannot hinge your salvation and your joy on the coattail of a white, curly-headed, seersucker suit guy Hinge it on their coattail for your joy and your salvation. It won't be there. Only comes to Christ. Only co you cannot find it there because it's not there. But our weakness will give us opportunities for that light to shine through us. I thought of a song. I hope it's a song. I blew the tennis shoes, but I hope this was a song. Jesus, be Jesus in me. Mm. No longer me, but thee. Mm. Resurrection power, fill me this hour. I pray that's a song. It is. Thank you. Jesus, be Jesus in me. I love that. Now, here we're going to turn for your part to help me, bail me. Now, I found this. I'm going to surprise you. I found this on uh, YouTube. YouTube. Oh, there you go. One, I YouTube didn't find is, it. A, is a Bamber group. It me. I thought it was YouTube. I didn't know what it was. But an article by Ann Graham Lotz, Billy Graham's daughter, who Billy said was the greatest, uh, greatest uh, uh, teacher and evangelist in her whole family. And it was, I am learning. I am learning. With reference to our scripture on what we have in this, th this body, it is treasure within this body. She gave how it applied to her life, to what she's gone through with all of her life and what she's still going through with now. Now, she noted, noted nine things that she has learned and still learning. learning. That's we'll my favorite thing. It's not, I have learned, done, I'm finished. It's, I am learning. It's always in a process. How long is eternity? I have no idea. Forever. I think throughout eternity, we will learn. And I think we'll have the teacher of teachers. <laughs> Amen. And we will learn when he steps out and says, thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Number one, she said, I'm learning that my faith is more important to God than my feelings are. Mm -hmm. That my faith is more important to God than my feelings are. Mm. 
feelings are temporal, faith is forever. Did you ever get so low that you really didn't know what you were thinking? To get mm -hmm. so low and think, what does God owe me? His account with us is paid in full. He owes us nothing. What do we owe him? Everything. 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 How would you repay God? I have no idea. How could you repay God for all of his love, his mercy, his grace? You can't repay that. There's no. But she said that I am learning that my mm -hmm. faith is more important to God than my feelings are. Because how many times... Have you heard someone say in the midst of a terrible situation, I just feel God's not there. I just feel alone. I f and we keep saying, I feel. And although I'm, those emotions are, are true, not saying that they're not. But true, that, true. But that's when you have to say, God, I believe you're there even if I can't see you at this moment. And that, that's, that's hard. That's hard to do. It is hard to do. And like my grandfather said, don't ever ask God, where are you? Ask Ronnie boy, where are you? He said, I'll guarantee that some of the people my age will know what this term, you're probably out of pocket. Mm. So you need to be pulled back into pocket. Number two, I am learning that his purpose is to develop my faith for an even greater goal of displaying his love and glory in and through my life. Mm. I like that. Me too. I am learning that his purpose is to develop my faith for an even greater goal of displaying his love and glory in and through my life. Mm. There's nowhere you'll ever find in the Bible, in the New Testament, that Christ ever took credit for anything. He just didn't do it. He wouldn't say, well, I did this, I did this. Everything he did was to glorify his heavenly father. And, you know, so many times, I'm not saying we overlook the heavenly father, but so many times I don't think about it like Christ thought about it. Now, Lazarus had been dead, decaying in the grave four days, and Christ waited. And why did he wait four days? Well, I'm not going to get on Lazarus, but he waited four days because he said, I'm glad for your sake. I wasn't there. Now, you know, I used to think forever and forever and forever that he was saying that because I would not have let Lazarus die. Probably that could be true. What I really think is I'm getting ready to do a miracle that you've never seen before. You've never seen anybody that's been in the grave. The spirits give up on them. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Come in four days and call them back to life. Yep. And that's what I'm glad that you haven't seen. But even before he raised Lazarus, he looked up and he said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. Man, we could put that in our life. Lord, thank you that you hear me. Father's Day, Father's Day. Uh, Sarah and I talked on the way to church. I don't have a father. She don't have a father. They're gone. Uh, and I just thought, I, I miss Father's Day. I miss Father. Mm -hmm. However, I don't have an earthly father anymore. He's gone. I'll see him again, but he's gone. But I have a heavenly father. That at the midnight hour, I can look up and say, Father. Do you know what an honor that is for us to look up and say, Father? After, after Christ resurrected, he saw the women. He said, you go back and tell, your, tell my disciples that I'm going back to my, my father, father and your father. Hey, brand new relationship. Boom. My God and your God. A brand new relationship right there. He's, gone, he's resurrected. But I'm going to my father and your father now. My God and your God now. I, I love that. Oh, here's one for Ronnie Boy. I'm learning to yeah. be at peace. For me too. Duh. I am learning to be at peace, content with whatever happens. Because I know whatever happens, it's in his hands. I have learned to be content. Who's that sound like? Paul said, I've learned to be content with whatever shape I'm in. If I'm hungry, I'm content. If I'm not hungry, I'm content. If I abound, I'm content. It doesn't make any difference to me. I'm content. Will we ever find that contentment? Mm. I think it'll be as long as we're serving him and striving to serve him. 
But then you think, take it out of the equation. What kind of con contentment have you got? None. I don't have any contentment. My term, sick and tired of being sick and tired, and my grandmother used to call it. They're, they're crazy. They're looking for something. They don't know what they're looking for. What would it be, Mamal? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You're looking for something that you don't know what you want. But whatever happens, it's in his hands. Drop it. Well, what about the outcome? It's in his hands. It's in his hands. Oh, I wish I could do the, those three right there. Mm -hmm. I wish I could do those three. Number four. Oh, yes, yes. you like this one? Yeah, I'll read it. You read it. I am learning to die to what I want when I want it and instead to choose to trust God to accomplish whatever he wants. Wow. That's easy to read that, but that is that is something you have to do every day. Why do you use the word die? It's not just, oh, well, maybe I will. But no, when, some, when you die to something, there's, there's no bringing that back what you wanted. It's gone. You're just what he wants. Die is a rough word. It sure is. I know when I, I there's two things I do when I fly somewhere. Number one, I hide my face when we pull out of the airport. Because you look back and you see that big word that says terminal. I don't want to read that. <laughs> And then you take off and you go up in the sky. I always read Nahum. Nahum the prophet. <laughs> I know. Because Nahum, Nahum says, <laughs> Nahum says that the clouds, hold on, are the footprints of where Jehovah has walked by. Well, glory. Well, glory to that, too. That's why I look out there and I say, fellas, stay in these clouds because I don't want to go above them or below them. <laughs> but uh, would you ever think about that terminal? I have never thought about that in my life. I don't life. look at it. And now I will think about look it, at it every time. Don't look at it. <laughs> Read that again because I've got it way off track. Oh, I am learning to die to what I want when I want it and instead to choose to trust God to accomplish what he wants. Will we ever get there? We got to try every day. Every day. It's not a one day we flip the light switch and there it is. Every, every day. But we day. got to die to it. Like you said, not in the back of your mind. Well, I'd like to. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do it. No. Die no. to it. I want to get to that place. To die and be content with mm -hmm. what he wants. Now, how often do we pray that? Lord, well, not what I want, but what you want for me. Your will be done. Your will be done, whatever that is. We've got to be careful. Well, take over, Amar, and read number, number five. five. I am learning to stay focused on him fulfilling. Oh, wait a minute. What did you, you read? No, my obligation. There it is. Sorry, missed that. Let me try again. I am learning to stay focused on him fulfilling my obligation when my own heart is broken. Did I read that correctly? What about me? Yes. What about you? Mm. I'll tell you what. We separated the wheat from the tares Sunday morning. <laughs> Been a long time since I heard a pastor from the pulpit say, just shut up. Yes. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I shouted on him. I guess he said, me shut up. To stay focused on him. Mm. Fulfill him. Now, you know what? Is this something we can do every day? It's going to be hard for me. I don't know about you guys, but it'll be hard. But again, she's in the process. I am learning. Again, something It's continual. I'm learning. I stay f focused. Mm. Even when my heart is it's broken. broken. Read number six. I'm learning to love others and care for their need. When my heart is hurting. Or when I'm in need. Yeah. I have to say, Mom, if you're watching, my mother has taught me to do this. I have seen her do it throughout her life. That is one thing she has modeled instead of just when you think you've been through enough that you can just hang it up and wait for somebody to come. That's something my mom does. And she does it beautifully. 
gets out and she's always helping someone else. And how does that make her feel? Great. <laughs> yes. She's still doing it. She's still doing it. Yeah. Mom Everyone's like, what's your mom doing? She's still working. And she fills See, us her ministry. We've got to get those characteristics back. Yeah. Paul said, forbid that I don't think of others over my needs. Others first over my needs. But when I'm in need, it's hard when we're in need to pray for somebody else that's in need. What about me, Lord? I think the Lord said, what about you? <laughs> Number seven. I'm learning to live with integrity well, and transparency before others, even when I can't see results. Mm. How many of these do you think Alan will preach on? Yeah. We've got him set three months. Seven. Yeah. Integrity and transparency. I like Both integrity, but I don't like transparency. Oh, yeah. We, we, yeah. But it's, we've got to be real. Yeah. Because otherwise, people think we're all these perfect jars of clay, and we are not. We have to be transparent. And of course, now it's got to be in the right setting. We're just not. But some, and sharing your testimony, that's a way of being transparent. Here's what God has done in my life. Let others see Jesus in me. Mm -hmm. Don't see me. See him in me. Mm -hmm. Not what I can do. Because, you know, when we get to the place where we realize I can't do anything, that's where he likes us to be. So many times in medicine, I've had not that many, but a lot, times of walk out and say, we have done all we can do. I'm sorry. We've tried. We've done all we can do. And so many times mm -hmm. I've thought, what's God doing up in heaven when he starts rolling them sleeves up? And saying, ask me. <laughs> Come to me. I haven't even started. And I've seen that work before, too. With integrity and transparency before others. When I can't see. How can you be happy when you can't see the results? Got to have faith. There you go. And again, it's so easy to say. But we got to try. All right. Number eight. Mm-hmm. I'm learning to be faithful when my flesh wants to run away. Ouch. Yeah. Hide. Give up. Be faith over the flesh. Still be. Now, uh, Paul said we don't fight against uh, physical things. We fight against spiritual warfare. That's rough. That's rough. But when I want to run away, that my faith will still be there. You can't run away from your faith in God. You can drop it, but you can't run away from it. You can't hide from it. And number nine. And as I'm learning, I'm also praying that God's glory peeps through the cracks in this clay pot. Is it time? It's time. I'll read it while you're doing it. And as I am learning... I'm also praying, still learning, but I'm also praying about it. You know, just don't think about it, pray about it. But as I'm learning, I am also praying that God's glory peeps through the cracks in this little frail vessel of clay. Can you guys dim it? Or I know it may be hard to see with the lights, but yeah. that's why I turned it to here. There's some of the bigger cracks. But yeah, even okay. though this yeah. pot... Doesn't look so great. The light is shining through. And without those cracks, we wouldn't see it. With th oh, there you go. Without these cracks, you wouldn't see it. Mm -mm. Now, that is a cracked pot. It's still useful because his glory is coming through there and his power is coming. Cracks in this frail, fickle pot. I love that. Yeah. You can still see it. And I like what you said. If it wasn't for the cracks, we would never see the light in it. Oh, oh. we have the light. Oh, no, look, here we go. Oh, look. Thank you, our wonderful tech team. Now, can we see? Isn't that amazing? Are we thankful for a cracked pot? Mm-hmm. It's useful, isn't it? Yes. 
Don't throw it away. Amen. 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 Thank you all for helping with the lights on that. They do amazing things up there. Keeping things going. Before we close, I want to uh, uh, I want to share this with everybody right before we close. Uh, I didn't find this on the computer. Uh, David Van Bever gave it to me. So I, it says, I had a rattlesnake bite one of my sheep in the face right on the nose about a week ago. The deadliest snake they are around here. The sheep swelled up his face and swelled up and it hurt, but the old rattlesnake didn't know the kind of blood that flows through sheep. Anti-venom is often most of the time actually made of sheep's blood. Wow. The sheep swelled up for about two days, but then the blood of the lamb destroyed the venom from the stake snake and I was worried but those sheep didn't care she kept on eating she kept on drinking she kept on hold on climbing the hills because she knew she was all right (laughs) often snakes in this life will reach out and bite you they inject their poison into you but they can't overcome the blood of the lamb of God well hallelujah they can't overcome the blood of the Lamb of God that washes away the sin of the world and the sting of death. Don't worry about the snake or his bite. Just make sure that the Lamb's blood is flowing through you. Amen. How do you like that, that, everybody? That is wonderful. I love that. Mm. Still climbing on the hills. (laughs) That's amazing. Wow. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time. Been a and I'm learning. We never get to that yeah, place where we don't learn. learn. Yeah. And we I'm, learn I'm, things yeah. that's so simple sometimes. That's always been there, mm. but never did see it. Always been there, but never did see it. Mm. <laughs> well, before we uh, say good night, so long, all Vitor Zane, farewell, farewell, as I break into the sound of music. Feel like Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. Happy trails to you, to you until we, we meet, meet again. again. Okay. Circle the wagons back around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those nights, and that's okay. You know, God loves this. Yes, he does. God loves his children to be happy and to have fun, especially in his word. Amen. But we do want to remember um, just any prayer needs that are out there. We know lots of folks have still dealing with illnesses. We have people that are giving God glory of how uh, he has touched them physically and they're doing better. Uh, We know folks are uh, being sustained by his grace as they're caring for loved ones, but we know there's still lots of things out there that everyone has to pray about. Were you about to share something? Yeah, I I, I was at this restaurant the other day and this lady, I don't even, I, I know her, but she said, hey, I've been watching you guys on Wednesday nights. I said, yes. And she said, I like the way you pray. You prayed for my mother. I said, we did. And I said, if you've got any other prayer requests, call them into the church. Tell them who you are Mm -hmm. and call them into the church and we will pray for them. She said, well, I have a prayer request right now. And I said, well, let me have it. She said, I have a very, very close friend that's very ill, needs a physical touch, as well as this person's family needs a physical Mm -hmm. touch. And that's for you. Wonderful. Um, And I want to, I know it's on our prayer list, but I really Feel led to mention I have a cousin we've been praying for and all the cancer treatment she has gone through that they were hoping would shrink tumors and things so she could have surgery they've all increased and yeah and I know she's she's holding on to her faith um, but I just know she's she's claiming she's in God's hands and she knows that but I just just really burden for her right now and her family uh, deciding what the next step should be, and they just want to do what? Follow God's will Follow for God's that. Will, they, yeah. She really, really does. That's and a, once That's a tough place. It is a tough place, and we we know all too well what a tough place it is. But her name's Angie. You'd remember her. Okay, Ron, why don't you pray for us, friend? Father, I love you. 
I thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, and for this time that we've had. It's just a taste of eternity when we get with you. Lord, let me, number one, Amy, number two, and everybody watching, sitting out there, apply this to our hearts and that we walk it. And Lord, Amy's cousin, people say, is there still a bomb in Gilead? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Lord, I would pray right now for her, for this other lady I mentioned, for this good friend. Lord, I pray that when we say amen, that they will feel the Spirit of God. And they'll know that we've held their names up to the Most Highest. Lord, that's not only the only thing we can do, but that's the best thing we can do. And that's when you want us is when we come to you like this. God, we may never understand through that eternity, but we can always say, and I'm getting to the place right now, I can say that I know that I know that I know. And I can claim it. And I can stand on it. Lord, that's my problem. I claim it, but do I stand on it? Lord, help us to stand on it, to walk boldly on it. The veil in the temple's rent. We can walk right into you boldly. We can say, Father, Lord, thank you for this time. Be with those that are watching, those here in the sanctuary. And, Lord, till we meet again, keep us in your care in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We love you all, but Jesus loves you even more. More. Even more. And we hope to see everybody back here at 10 a.m. for another wonderful time of worship together in person or live stream, however you can be with us, please be with us. Amen? Donuts are coming.